Many of you know, Joy certainly knows this, that uh, we both grew up wanting to be broadcasters. And uh, Joy was also a really good athlete, so she had options beyond that. Uh, I, I, of course, was not. And so I wanted to be a baseball announcer uh, as a kid, but I didn't grow up in Southern California. But all of us, if you go to college, and many of you go to college to be school teachers, uh, to be um, business people, to be lawyers, doctors, uh, if you go to college and want to be a baseball broadcaster, you may be the only person at your school that wants to do that. And that was me at Eastern Washington University. I wanted to be a baseball broadcaster. And I wanted to be specifically a radio baseball broadcaster. I know, weird, right? Like, that's what I wanted to be. I did not care about television. I grew up, and radio was my friend. And so I grew up in the coast of Washington. My mom had an AM radio, and I got a great present years later from my parents, a giant AM radio where I could tape things. That was a big deal back, you know, when I was a kid, 80s, mid-80s, late 70s. And so I didn't grow up listening to Ben Scully as a kid, but I wanted to be a baseball announcer. And my dad bought me an AMC Pacer. There was not much. It was used. My dad was a small town doctor and he knew a small town car salesman. And they bought me a AMC Pacer. And I remember they bragged about the radio. And when you have an AMC Pacer, there's not a lot to brag about. Mine eventually caught fire on a freeway. But they bragged about that AM radio. It was a blau punked AM radio. And so I was off to Las Vegas, got a job to do one inning of play-by-play, and I had to do a bunch of sales <laughs> in the desert, okay? So it was a great first job. Made no money, $7,800 my first year. And trust me, folks, 35 years ago, that was no money. But I was going to do baseball, and I had heard about Scully. I'd seen him as a, uh, a network broadcaster with Joe Garagiola. And then as I go to Vegas, the Dodgers were on 720 AM KDWN radio, KDON. It's a big signal. It's like what they call in the radio industry a blowtorch. You could hear it for like 40 states. And I I got a listen of Scully. Now, I grew up with Dave Niehaus of the Mariners, and Dave was great, Hall of Fame broadcaster. But Scully was different. Scully was so gifted, so intelligent, so refined, he was intimidating. And I had nothing but aspiration uh, and will and confidence and bluster. And Scully was so good, it was daunting and jarring and intimidating. Born in 1927 in the Bronx, Scully was literally, when I first heard him, he was an expert on everything. But yeah, baseball, but like poetry and U.S. history and Shakespeare. Seriously, he would drop Shakespeare. He was poetic. He was melodic. It was like, kind of like literature on radio. Last night, I read, I read his call, the final inning of 1965's perfect game with Sandy Koufax. And I kid you not, it reads like a chapter. It is a novel. It would be a beautiful final chapter in a novel. And uh, I think you could say he was the conscience of baseball, but he, he was also sort of the North Star of Southern California. He probably brought more joy to more people, probably more often than anybody in the history. And I'm talking politicians. I'm talking everybody in Southern California history. Nobody brought more joy more often to more people. And... Out of respect for Scully, I'll, I'll go Shakespeare here. Act 1, scene 3, Hamlet. To thine own self be true. What does that mean? It means be authentic. Never, never wage in um, self-deception. Be yourself. Nobody has ever, ever transcended generations and been more about who they truly are than Scully. To the last broadcast, he was like a very kind 1950 histories teacher. He was like Mr. Rogers, if Mr. Rogers knew what a two-seamer was. He was like the Pope, if the Pope could describe the infield fly rule. He was kind and smart, and the ultimate compliment I could give any broadcaster, or any broadcaster could give to you, the consumer, is preparation. Scully had no peer. He could be funny. He once said about Coors Field, which is known as a place where a lot of runs are scored because of the high elevation. 
Scully once said, you don't need at Coors Field uh, an official score. You need a certified public accountant. That was Scully. His asides, his jokes, his wit were perfect. But he was at his best in the biggest moments. Shakespearean, poetic, melodic. He made everybody smarter. In a profession where you need to talk, Scully was the great listener. People think he worked as a solo act, even though he had many partners, all excellent in the booth, listening to him. But he wasn't a solo act. His respect to you, you were his partner. Vincent Edward Scully. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.